Ronnie Dale for Willing and WesternAustralia.com and welcome to another episode of Modified in New South Wales. We're actually in Gloucester and this vehicle here is from Queensland and uh, it's a Pajero. So let's meet the owner and find out what's going on. Now there's a lot of stuff in this car. I haven't gone through it yet, but there's a lot of stuff I know. G'day Ronnie, how are you? How are you Brett? Good mate, good. Good to meet you. Thank you, you Even too. Even though I just met you in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so this Pajero, year, uh, make, model, yep. so all it's the specs. A 2002 NM Pajero Exceed V6 petrol. V6 petrol? Yep. And you supercharge it? Yes, yes, we've just supercharged it. You know, we carry a pretty big trailer on the back. We'll get to that. Nice. We want a little extra power, a little bit, a little, a little extra torque. So we've put, a, um, we've put a bullet supercharger on it. We'll take a look at that. Excellent. Did you mention the gearbox? Uh, yeah, auto gearbox. Auto gearbox. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, yeah, and as Brett mentioned, there's a trailer behind it, so we will be featuring the trailer as well. So you're going to get it. Pretty much a double modified here. I reckon we get straight into it. Great, let's do it. Cool. On to bar work, and this is an ARB bar. Yes, it is. I can tell. Winch mounted. Correct. You've got the cable. Yes, I do. And it's a worn. Worn 10K, the Magnum. 10,000 pounds, I'd Yeah, that's right. 10K is for. Yep. And a bash plate. We got the Bushkins bash plates. That's okay. Bushkins. Yep, that's right. Starts at the front, goes right back to the transmission. So holy heck, that goes a fair way. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're that's not going to get a we're not going to get a rock in the transmission or anything. Half the length of the car. Yeah, yeah half that's half right. Half the length of the car. That's yeah. right. So lots of good protection there. Nice and thick, really solid. Can't bend those ones. Nice big skid plate. Yes. <laughs> side steps. Side steps. Yeah, same guys. So. Uh, I actually took the factory side steps off and Bushkin does a steel rock slider as well. So steel, nice and strong, you know, a bit of, a bit of body work protection along the side there. Excellent. Yeah, great. Have you had it resting on it? Not yet. Not yet? Let's give it a go. No. <laughs> <laughs> Roof rack. Yes, yes, we've got a, a Rhino platform. That gives me a lot of options to what I can put up there at the moment. What I've got up there is I've got a uh, drift ensuite shower, which is really nice, just drops down the side so you can get changed if you're just out on the beach or something like that. So that's, so that's really handy. That's a whole handy. shower room. That's a whole shower room right there. And the other side, I've got a drifter rapid wing, so the 270 degrees, so it swings right around on the back. So again, if you're out just on, on a day trip or something like that and you want some shade, I've got the rapid wing on the other side. As you see there, I've got a bike carrier up on top, so I can carry... Oh, this is a bike carrier? It's a bike carrier, yeah, yeah. So I can carry one up on top as well as what we do with the trailer. So sometimes I just want to go, you know, when it's just myself and I just want to take the bike up on top, I can. Oh, fair enough. And then I've got all the other Rhino goodies that go up there, the bags and all that sort of stuff, so I can do various types of combinations up on top. Do you pretty much need a riff rack because of the wagon, eh? Yeah, yeah, you don't right. bring the trailer, of course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, we'll see the drawers that are in the back there. But if you want to, if you want a rooftop bag and really toss a bit more yeah, stuff on the top, yeah. Yeah, the platform's really handy for that. Yeah. Are you swag man or tent man? Tent, tent man? man. So Oz tents. Oz tents. So again, having the platform for the Oz tents is fantastic because you so just lay RV... them up there. RV five. I got an RV five, a four, and a two. Okay. So you just yeah. different ones, different types of trips. He has kids. They're not all for him. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly right. Yep. Now to lights and comms. And I'm going to start with your headlights because I can see there's a blue globe in here. Oh yeah, yeah. So the headlights, Mars Performance actually does a, uh, a uh, angel light kit, I guess they call it. So your modern cars have a nice daytime running uh, uh, yes. light effect and they're just a, an absolute drop in. They just factory fit straight into the, uh, into the older Pajeros. And then I did the, uh, the Xeon upgrade as well. So really bright white light just for normal driving, which is really nice. You know, again, when you're out in the country, having good clear light's a good thing. Yeah. So I've ac upgraded those. And this is a LED next to it? Is that yes. a high beam? That's right, yep. High yep. beam's LED. Yep, you got it. So yeah, they work really well. I got Intensity? the intensities, yeah, yeah. I love the intensities. So I actually started with the small ones. And uh, just again, when you're out in the, as you well know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> all the light you can get is what you need. So I went to the bigger ones, and then not long after that, uh, ARB brought out their light bar as well. But uh, at, the, at the moment for the Pajero, the light bar doesn't sit in just behind them. So we've gone with a, uh, a Bush Ranger up on the, on the roof rack to give us a little extra light. So that's just a 33. Bush Ranger. Yeah, Bush Ranger, 33 inch bar up on the top. But you know, the combination of those together, you know, when you're out in the country is just spot mm. on, really clear. I can also see you, you got it well and truly back from your window, so you're not going to get glare inside. Yeah, zero issue here at all. You know, I get so a little tiny bit of light. Here? Yep, just it actually it hits up here. It doesn't hit down too far. Oh wow! Okay. So it's it's trained a bit further up the road. I've got some work lights on the back, and that's a nice setup as well. I've got a switch that allows me just to hook it up to the reverse light. So when I'm just trying to move around at camp or whatever else, and see it'll just come on with reverse, or I've got an override when I'm setting up camp. 
yeah, yeah. And your so, override switch is in the back? No, just on the dash. So on when dash. I, I pull up, I can just hit the button. We're ready to set up. Away we go. Oh, excellent. It's actually, it's interesting, even with uh, opening gates, you know, out in the country, when we're going around, we've got to open and close gates. Open and close. You yeah. know, so I drive through and the poor, you know, the poor person closing the gate now can't see anything. So I just flick the switch and they can see properly. So, yeah, yeah so two work lights at the back. That's a good it's point, nice. actually. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. yeah, it helps out. Yeah, it's a good setup. Comms, I've just got a, a just a GME head unit. Um, I've got the one that you actually tuck away behind the dash and all the controls are actually on the hand unit. I find that's really handy. It keeps the dash nice and tidy inside, but just a GME UHF 80 channel unit. It's all you need when you're traveling around Australia, so it works well. Excellent. Great. And sand flag? That's from a sand flag, yep, spot on. Rightio. So, yep. we were just about to wrap up lights and comms, and then yep. I noticed this, and I was like, what is that? That, that is, with the Exceed model of the Pajero, they are headlight washers, and they're actually a godsend. So you get, out, you get a bit of mud and whatever else up on the front of the car, and when you just, you just, square it just and... washes over the top and gives you a bit more light, which so, is great. So no wiper, but they work No right. wiper, but yeah, they're a really strong little little pulse of, of water. That's pretty handy. Yeah, that's really handy. So yeah. Oh, and solar then, input. Yep, yep, I've got uh, full red arc system in there. So I just want to make it easy to get to my solar. So when I run my solar blanket, I don't have to pop the bonnet. I can just plug in there. Oh, excellent. Keeps so, things simple. Yeah, we'll discuss that when we pop the bonnet yeah, in, because yeah, that sure. obviously goes to BCDC. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep, spot on. So now to the power plant, and you have a lot of stuff in here, I take it? Yeah. And a supercharger? The supercharger's the key, but there's lots of things on the bonnet. Let's take a look. Awesome. And there it is. Magic. <laughs> All right. Oh, so there's the piece de resistance, a bullet positive displacement supercharger, 8 PSI. Um, all stock internals, so you can still run your stock internals. So and supercharger means you're constant 8 PSI? That's correct. Yep, yep, that's right. It um, comes in from a thousand RPM, so you've got extra torque from from down low right through the whole power band. It's a flat power band. When you're towing, that's what you want, right? You don't, you know, you don't want the sort of the, the turbo and the traditional centrifugal superchargers that give it to you over the uh, as you build RPM, you get more boost. But this one's consistent right through. So even though this is a six cylinder, they add a seventh injector that's controlled by the computer just to give it some uh, intercooling through the through the injectors. It gave me a bit, an extra about 130 extra newton meters of torque which so is exactly what you need when you're towing. In layman's terms, if you're sitting, st stand still, yep. and you go, how much difference? Oh, 30, 40% straight away. Yeah. Night and day? Night and day. Night and yeah, day. whole new car. You know, I love, you know, I love this. I've had this car since new. I've had this one since 2002. I've looked after it all the way through. And I really didn't want to turn the car over just to get some, you know, to get a newer motor. Mm. And that's allowed me to keep the car. So, you know, a bit of an investment, but a great investment to allow, to allow me to keep going with this car. Excellent. Great. Fair bit of electronics going on here, but before we get to that, yeah. let's just finish your supercharger and, and yep. the air intake. So, yep, yep. has the air intake changed at all to accommodate for...? No, no, we didn't have to modify anything there. We did add the uni filter, of course, uh, but all the inter air intakes, all stock. Um, we've got the Safari snorkel, um, but uh, no, no, all the intakes is, is all normal. The is bullet that, guys is, that do the supercharger, you know, they take care of the modifications to be able to fit the, uh, to fit the supercharger in, in, and replace the intake manifold. But is the it, rest of it's stock. Is it a bolt-on kit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can buy the kit. You can do it yourself. Um, you need a you need a tune, obviously. And mm. uh, but there's a piggyback computer, and the chip talk guys do that, and they're all over Australia. So, you know, what, if you do the kit yourself, you buy the kit, you put it in yourself, then the chip talk guys can sort you out with the tune that you need. Oh, excellent! Just yeah. get it running, yeah. running how it should be again. That's right. Yeah. So obviously different serpentine belt as well. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Longer belt, and they change a couple of the pulleys just to make sure that it fits around everything fine. But um, just a traditional serpentine belt, just a little bit longer. Yeah. Excellent. So the electrics. Yep. C Tech. That's for monitoring the batteries, so you can see what level your battery's at. So I can just use a Bluetooth app to see where the batteries are at. You know, it's it's a 15 year old car, and if you want to bring it up to spec and bring all the new gadgets on, you know, you've mm. got to add a little bit to the electrical. But as you can see, second battery, that's critical. You've got to Second have that. Batteries. How many batteries do you have in total? Two. two. Running from the front. Yep, that's correct. So solar put in charge. Yep, comes and to... you'll see just about where your finger is. There's a C, There's a uh, red arc BC DC 1225 just down in there oh, somewhere. Down here. Just yeah. tucked inside there, yeah. So I love the red arc gear. It works really well. The solar input on that. So that keeps them all nice and topped up. I've got their little dual display down on the, on the dash so I can see what the state the batteries are in. So if anyone's looking at this and they think, there's a lot going on here. Well, that's because both batteries are here and everything's happening here. That's correct. So exactly right. So there's obviously a lot less wiring. Oh, there's the very, back. yeah, that's mm. right. There's, a, there's very little at the back. Yeah. You know, there's a bit that runs back there. I've got an Anderson on the back for the trailer. You know, we've got a, a 12 volt setup with the drawers in the back. So there's a bit that has to run to the back, but all the control systems up the front here, along with alarms and all the other things that you do with a, 
with a good vehicle. So, yep. Excellent. So, apart from, I mean, your electrical system and the supercharger, yep. you've kept it fairly. Yeah, stock. other than that, it's pretty stock. Yeah, the rest yeah. of the, the rest of the gears, you know, the rest of the gears stock, just the Safari, and away we go. Well, I think stock's the right word anyway. Not with, <laughs> the, not with <laughs> not the supercharger. With the, not with the supercharger sitting <laughs> on top. No, spot on. Tires and lift. Start, yeah. with, start with your tyres? Yeah, start with the tyres. I'm a big fan of the Bridgestones. I've always used Bridgestones all my life, so I've got Bridgestone jewelers. I've got the all-terrain all light trucks, so I do want the extra protection on the sidewalls. Again, when I'm with the towing that I'm doing, I'll make sure I've got a good, strong tyre. The Bridgestones are trusted everywhere, so the jewelers for the tyres. How long have you had this set for? This set I've had for about uh, 12 months now. We've probably done about 20,000 K. 20,000 K? Two. Yeah, yeah, we've done a few trips up to Western Queensland and down here, down to Gloucester where we are today. We've done a few, few trips down here, so they've got a few miles on them now. So how many cars do you normally get out of these? Oh, gee, easily 60,000. 60,000? Yep, yep. You know, I keep an eye on them. I don't, I don't run them all the way down to the to the tread markers. I, I really like using fresh tyres, so as soon as they look uh, like they're a bit worn. So you're a like bit worn. you sell them in about 50? Yeah, yeah. And, and just put that towards the new set? Exactly right. I, it's, it's much, I feel safer having fresh tyres on a car with the trips that we do. I can see you haven't gone overly big. No, no. So what size are we? we I think are they're just 245s, mate. They're just oh, yeah, 220. 70. Yep, yep. yep. 265s. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So not much more than factory. So just try and keep it in line with what the, the vehicle was designed to do. Factory rims. Again, just kept it simple. Didn't need anything special there. They've worked well for me. Oh, well, they fit your tyres and everything. Exactly so, right. Yeah. They, they work well. Your suspension. So I've got pedders. All I needed was just a little bit of lift. You know, I still wanted to make sure that the kids could get in and out of the car pretty easily, but I just wanted a bit of lift. So I've got 50 mil of lift. The coilover. Yeah, yeah. So coilovers, uh, the Pajero is a factory coilover all the way around. So all four corners. So I've got coils and shocks, 50 mil lift. And then... Um, with the trailer, do you have yep. an airbag? Uh, yeah, yeah, I use Airbag Man uh, airbag airbags man. on the back, and they're just manually adjustable. So I've got a compressor in the car, ARB compressor, and I can run there around the can back. You and do just... it? Oh, so you've got to run around the back. I just run that back yeah, and do it the, back, the old way. Yeah, the yeah, old-fashioned yeah. way. So yeah, no, 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 no uh, buttons on the dash yet. But yeah, I can still adjust it, which is nice. Again, you know, with, with a heavier load on the back, you can adjust it. And when you don't have the trailer, you can let it down, which is pretty nice. So, yeah. It, yeah, all about comfort. Yeah, ride. exactly. Yeah, spot on. That's a fairly neat setup you got here, but before we get to this, yes. I want to go to the door. Yep. I absolutely love these steps. Yes, yeah, perfect. They're so good. Yeah, they yeah. fold up. Um, Very quick, nice and easy, nice and small. Yeah, just... I'll pull it out and show you. Yep. There you go. There we go. Must have, yep. I reckon. So good. Yep. Anyway, so we... We we'll pop that all back this stuff in later. Yeah, that's about, it. Yeah. Talking about a step. No, nah, well, it's really handy. You know, yeah. when you're trying to get things just, you know, just a little thing off the top, etc. It's handy to have that there. So yeah, definitely, you bet. Yeah, spot on. But what I really want to get to here is, yep. I mean, this is factory, so it's yeah, that's all just stuff factory. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's all the standard stuff. Yep. But in here, because you have a two-inch lift. Yep. And you have um, pretty much the 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 normal tire Tires, size. Yep, yep. This is all your. That's the factory toolkit. The factory toolkit. All those. All so that's those all still gonna, work. Yeah. Still going to work. Yep. Yeah, still going to do the job. Yeah, it's very handy. Yeah. So yeah. all that gear is still there. Yeah. I can still use that. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of people that lift their car, put bigger tires on. And your bottle jack's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> the jack doesn't reach up to the jack no, points anymore. Not at all. No, spot on. So no, that's all good. Yep. All, all right. right. And you want to just talk through here? Yeah, you can go for it. Yeah, mate. perfect. Yeah, yeah, good. So, um, drifter car back setup. It was really important for us, um, particularly when we started with uh, day trips and Oz tent camping. You know, we had the Oz tent on the top. Um, this setup gives me my ARB fridge on a nice drawer. So that's just hit the button. I like how you only got one lever on it too. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's just just the one slides out, locks out, no drama. Mm. So if you're on a bit of an incline, that all locks out. Just the ARB 35. It's you know, dual compartment if I want it. So that's pretty handy. And that's right there, nice, nice, nice integrated drawer. I just noticed when you pull it out, there's something underneath it. Oh yeah, yeah. So underneath in the Pajero, the third row seat usually rolls in underneath. Oh, so but you can actually under. take you can take the seat out, and ah. it becomes a big storage well. So there's a huge storage well underneath there. So all my spare parts, my recovery gear, etc., all sit underneath the drawers. Uh -huh. I just roll that forward, and I can grab all the gear. Excellent. Really handy. So extra storage. But yeah, with this drawer setup, I've got all my tools at the top here, so no drama. I can get to my drawers there. And these guys use these guys use Teflon runners, so there's no ball bearings anywhere on these drawers, so it's really handy out in the bush. You get a bit of dirt or whatever else, they mm. slide really nicely. And one of the other features I like is they do these integrated tables. So you can just slide them out and use them as a, as a, as a so work surface and they rock solid. Here. Yep. But then they come out the whole way and they've got legs. legs underneath. All right. So, That's and cool. with this, that drawer set up, you got two, two tables. Two tables, yeah. All right. 
And then this guy down here is their little car back kitchen. So it's a drawer, so I can just use it as a regular drawer. But the whole unit comes out. There's just a lock there. The whole unit comes out. It's got legs in it. And the table flips over and you end up with a 1.8 meter long kitchen bench. Oh, really? So, on that? Yeah, just on that. So you just pull, just pull that guy out. And the whole thing just comes out of the car. Top flips over. Kitchen. Excellent. So they call that their car back kitchen. And uh, otherwise, it's just a drawer. And you can still access all your goodies still there. So I keep it. a little... So you can still I make keep... your sandwich here or yep. whatever. Cook something. On the, on the roadside, no drama. And if you want to go to full cooking, so I keep a little gas burner in there, some gas bottles, plates, cups, etc. All in there, a little jet boil. And uh, easy to make a coffee. Excellent. And then they finish it off nicely on the top. So they've got wings on the side. Oh, yeah, wings. so little wings on the side there. So there's no drop So you don't down. lose your space. And... Yeah, so I can still get in there. So I keep all my axes and saws and things like that in the side. And uh, all my 12 volts on the other side, but then nice platform across the top. As you can see, I can just put all the bags, all the, all the kids' bags, etc., all go on the top, and nothing falls in. But if you need to access them, they just lift out. It's really yeah. handy. Cargo barrier to stop it all from going? Yeah, yeah, got to have the cargo barrier so you can pack that nice and neatly. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's good. And another thing about that drawer setup is if I want to take that out and go back to three rows of seats, it's just three tie down points. So you can just pop the whole thing out and go back to three rows if you want. Probably is the most important thing for a wagon is to have some kind of draw system. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise you're just stacking on top. You're just stacking yeah. and stacking and stacking, and that's made it so much easier to use the back of my car. Mm. And you know, even weekend events and things like that, you know, even just kids' events and whatever else, drinks in the, you know, if you've got a fridge in the car the whole time, boom, drinks go in there, etc. It's really handy. Interior time. So that's my GME radio there. So the base, the base is hidden away elsewhere, With but all everything the I need, buttons on there. all the buttons are right on the front, which is pretty handy. So where's so. the speaker? It. It's actually, it's in the back of it. Oh, it's in the back of that? Yeah, yeah. So it's the whole, everything I need's right here. Uh -huh. It's really handy. So you don't have to plumb it into anything else. It's all, it's all right there. So that's a, that's a nice addition. The Pioneer head unit, uh, two benefits. It gives me my uh, navigation. So it's a navigation system, uh, but it's also a Apple CarPlay system. So my phone can hook in and, and it makes it easier. It'll read out my text messages and things oh, like that. Blue, so Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Or... Yeah, yeah. So it pl this one actually plugs right in, so it can play the music off my phone through the car. And battery so that's monitor. My, yeah, so that's my Red Arc battery monitor. So both batteries come up on there. That's nice and handy. The lockers are here on the center console, so the ah. compressors right here. My party trick. It probably front won't do and it. rear. Front and rear lockers. So ARB lockers, front and rear. So compressors right there, and then front and rear lockers. So we've tucked them into the dash nice and neatly. We've got the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite uh, tow. You know, to, the towing braking yep. controllers in there and I've got a lock up torque converter which is aftermarket as well so from wholesale automatics for the for the auto so that's just under here as well that'd so be that's good for handy. towing yeah yeah absolutely particularly downhill I find that's really handy we didn't talk about it before but also the uh, I've got an auxiliary fuel tank so they don't do long ranger doesn't do a long range fuel tank but they long ranger does an auxiliary tank for the Pajero so it's an extra 60 litres ah I wish so we did that with all of them because yep yeah I kind of find it pointless you get rid of an 80 litre tank, you put a 100 litre tank in. Yep. It's better than another tank yeah, in. That's right. Mm. So an extra 60 litres, and it's controlled just down here as well, so I can see the level of that, and then I can just hit the button to top up, which is, again, nice. You know, running petrol, you go through a bit more so petrol. So 120 yep. litres total? Uh, 90 plus the 60, so 150. Oh, it's coming 90. Yeah, yeah. That's so, not yeah, bad. so I got about 150 litres, which is great. All right, so now I'm going to ask you yep. fuel range without trailer and yep. with trailer. So without trailer? Pretty normal is 15 litres per 100. Um, with trailer, um, 2022 20, flat road, and when you get into the you get into the ranges and whatever else, then I get up to 25, 28 per, li per 100. Okay. So it's, it's petrol, right? So yeah, yeah, petrol. It gets up there, but yeah, without the trailer, 15. I've just done a few long trips, and I, mm. I monitor the numbers, and they're the numbers I get on this one. Now onto the trailer, and this isn't a camper trailer you wouldn't call because there's no, no tent on it that's correct it's an equipment trailer equipment trailer so it's designed to support we do tent camping and we wanted a, a good quality equipment trailer that we could put our tents in but have all the other benefits of a camper trailer with things like kitchen and water and power okay so you want to talk, look through it yeah i reckon so yep um the drifter dot 138 one, so this is number number 138 oh so, so they keep number the build one, numbers okay. yeah, yeah we keep the build numbers yeah all right so in other words you have cargo bags on top. That's right. So but storage bags could, on top. You could put a roof. Top you could tent. put a roof top tent up there if you wanted if to. You Some wanted people to. do that. Um, I've got storage up the top there, so I keep things like uh, excess chairs and my Oz tents are up on the top of here. Okay. So they're up all on top. Yeah. And then you come down, as you see, I've put a rhino rack on this side, so I've got some shade going out on this side. So you got a sun seeker here. Yeah. I know you got the 
270 awning. I've got the uh, the drifter. It's a full. It's actually called a super wing. It's actually square on both ends, so it's actually further than a 270. So it's square over the kitchen, okay. and it's square over the other side. So we'll get to that in a minute. But it's a big awning on the so other side. Does that side. mean then you go all the way around? Yep. To here, comes around to here, and then you and go then here. this one comes out. So I've got shade on three sides of the trailer. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So it's good. So before we get to this. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Bike racks? Yeah, yeah, so I've got an ISI bike carrier on the front, so I've got kids, so sometimes we'll bring four bikes on a camp. So I've got an ISI bike carrier on the front, and it's nice, it's hinged, so I can actually swing it away. Yeah. So that's good. I love the look at this bike. Oh, that's the cool. fat bike's great. The ultimate camping bike's <laughs> a fat bike, so. Yep. Max tracks, yeah. Got the mat tracks on the front, yep, got four of those. So. Uh, Color coded? Yeah, yeah, so I, I decided I wanted the same color as the trailer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, spot on. Big toolbox on the front, so that's where I keep things, like I've got a little one kilowatt generator and some power tools. Yeah, I've got, some, fake turf. I've got some fake turf, you know, when you get out in those really dusty areas. Yeah, that's I find that's idea. really nice to, mm. you know, and it gets rainy. I just run that in the kitchen area, so you've got somewhere to wipe your boots and just ah, a bit nicer. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah. Just don't use that around my dog. Oh, really? My, my dog likes to go on that. <laughs> it's a little, little bathroom. <laughs> no, yeah, a little bathroom, yeah. <laughs> Great. Rightio. So along the side here, yeah, yeah. Gas bottle holder. Gas bottle holder. Jerry Gann holders, but I've got these bags, um, PVC bags, and I actually store wood in them. So on this side, I store hardwood. And on the other side, I store kindling. So I've got enough wood for, you know, two oh. nights with a fire. So if you can't find any wood, I've always got some backup wood on the trailer. Yeah, that's, that's pretty clever to actually have a bag for the kindling yep. because a lot of time you get to camp, someone's got a bag of wood, yeah. there's nothing to start Everyone's it Everyone's like, how can I start this fire? Yeah, because so everything's kindling. wet or whatever. That's right, so I carry kindling as well. Uh, so little toolbox on the side, so I keep my, you know, all my, my sort of handy tools there, so shovels and saws and things like that are in the toolbox. Obviously a foldable shovel then. Yeah, yeah, just a little foldable <laughs> one, yeah, nice and nice and easy to get to. So they're just a little tool kit there and general tools, etc. in the site. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like that's my mattress. inflator. Yeah, yeah, inflator for the mattress. So everything's accessible there in the toolbox. Another little storage box here. I actually keep heat beads in this one. So if I'm oh, cooking... Oh, cooking. Yeah, so if I'm cooking on, on, a, on heat beads, they're just handy as well. So the point of the equipment trail is storage, right? So mm. I want to be able to bring all my gear for family and friends. So... So there you go, so That's it, yeah. tables, chairs, kitchen gear, it's all, you know, it's all at my fingertips here, all my stoves and everything are all here. And then we just put some, we just put some lights in here so when we get to camp, just hit the dimmer and you've got lighting, two colour and away you go. Excellent. So that light's out all here so it's a nice and easy oh, to set up. Oh, you even had the... Yeah, so just give it a turn. It? Yeah, and just press it in. And then... It changes. Oh, yes, yeah, so you got the amber light. Yeah. Amber light's good to keep bugs away. Yeah. And you can dim it. Yep. That is really cool. Spot on. I'm going to have to find out where you get these dimmers from. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you turn it off? Uh, you just dial it all the way down, dim it down to zero. Oh, right. There right. you go. There you go. See, they're core lights, those ones, the KORR guys, so core, core light lights. by. Yeah, yeah. So we've just wired them into the trailer, so it's all just part of the system, and I've put them on all the doors, so when we're setting up, we've got good light all around the trailer. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, there. that's handy. So we've got two water tanks under the, under the, under the trailer, so two 80-litre tanks. And then we put a 12 volt pump. So, that's so, the, so 160 in total. So 160 liters of, of town water, which is nice. And that's the that's the harder system. So big water pump there, and that feeds off. We'll have a look at the kitchen, but that feeds off to the kitchen as mm. well. But also here, so we can just hit this, and you know we can fire up a hose or a shower. So I run a Julka shower. We just hook it onto that, and you've got flowing water for the shower, which is oh, pretty cool. handy. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's really convenient. So one of the fillers is here. We're not even halfway through this yet. Yep. But I'm going to ask you now. So yep. is this? Is this is a custom option. Oh yeah, yeah. So the guys, the guys in Gloucester that do this trailer, they they start with a base trailer. So they build these trailers out of Aussie steel. It's actually Newcastle steel. Um, they start with a base trailer, and then you can customize it to suit what you want. So if you're a rooftop camper, you'll get it with a rooftop. If you're a foldover camper, they'll take this off and they'll put a foldover camper. Or if you're an equipment, if you're into your tent camping like I am, they do an equipment uh -huh. equipment version. So. Yeah. And you know that it works really well because you can customize. We were just having a look at some the other day, and every one of us, all the all the people that use these trailers, all customize it a little bit differently to suit the type of camping they do. Now to the main feature of this trailer, and I have had a sneak peek in here because yep. we pulled this box out here, storage yep. box. That's a tucker box here. Yeah, it's just yeah. a storage box. You just put your veggies in that one. Yep. So we could pull let's the take a look. Out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. So door swings back, and the kitchen just slides out on Teflon runners, so it's really easy to slide out. You just bring it out. Legs drop down, drops down. That's the kitchen. Oh, so you got a stopper here. To... Yeah, there's a stopper there. Yeah, that's right. So there's a stop rope, so you can't far. pull it out too far. Just drops down. As you see, I've got my fridge here. And um, oh, that's the fridge. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So 47 yeah, cool. litre. Looks like an esky from a. It does. Yeah, 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 but it's so, a yeah, it's got a full fridge freezer. Yeah, yeah. So it's a freezer as well. And uh, yeah, so the kitchen's under there. 
and uh, this little guy just swings out on the end. So you've got some extra bench space there. All right. And then the, that top comes off and actually, it actually, uh, yeah, they just pop off. Is there one back here too? No. And you can just lift that off if you want. So that comes off, just pop it on the ground from there, Ronnie. Okay. But that comes off and it actually, it actually install, sits in here so you actually end up with a wraparound bench as well. Oh, that sits on there. That sits that's on what there. the legs are for here? Yep, that's right, the legs. That comes off, sits along here. Bench goes on top okay. and you've got a wraparound kitchen. Yeah, we'll throw up some footage of uh, a camp where where that's all set up. We had to set up. That's I didn't right. see you pull it out, but I had it all. You had it all set up. That's right. Yeah. So gas stove in here. Drawers are all in here. All my pots and pans are in here. So the kitchens. I'll just pop that out quickly so you can see it. That moves out. That comes off. Oh right. Okay. And there's so the you're... kitchen. Yeah. Hey. Cool. So all my utensils are there. Pots and pans. So in other pots words, pans are all in there. In other words, if you wanted to just pull up a roadside. Yep. You can just. Pull, pull that out. out. So we've done road trips where we just want to stop overnight. We just pull that out, cook up our dinner, yeah. slot it back in, done. And you can see behind you there's a bunch of bunkers. That's our, our bunker, Oz tent bunkers sitting just there in that pile. These ones here. Oh, these ones here. Okay. They're our bunkers. So for just an overnight stop, we just pull them down, drop them on the ground. We've got somewhere to sleep, somewhere to cook, pop all that done. away. Easy, done. And then when you don't bring the trailer, you've got the other kitchen in. The little it, kitchen is in it the, the car. Is the same as this? Um, smaller version of it. Smaller version? Yeah, yeah, okay. no fridge in it. No fridge in it, so you've got about that yeah. and then that. That's right. Right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, you know, just beside it's a big storage box. So, so we'll just drag on. that in. Same thing, running on Teflon runners, and um, you get this option of popping a table on the top. Tables, yeah. So there's the legs. So, so that's a. Uh, They're both tables, yeah? Yeah, two tables. So I'll just set that there for now. So two tables, and then just I've popped all my gear in here. So I've got my tents in. I've got my primary tent that I use in here. You know, my my stretcher, my pillow, all that sort of stuff. All my oh, poles, so sleeping bags, everything. Sleeping bag, everything that I need is all here. So if it's just me and a couple of mates going out, I can access that stuff really easily without climbing up and starting to break out the, yeah, the family yeah. gear from the top of the trailer. If, yeah. What surprises me is how easy the Teflon is to... Yeah, yeah, and it's Teflon on Teflon. So they install Teflon on the bottom here and Teflon on that. Mm. And, uh, you know, no roller bearings. You imagine having, you know, seven foot of roller bearings and, and dirt and sand and different things, yeah, right? Yeah. But Teflon on Teflon, you know, it That's just slides cool. really easily. Have right? you ever lubricated it with anything? No, no. It's off step. I've had it for over a year now and I've never touched it. I guess you could probably put something on it, but no, it, that works great. Pump water? Yeah, yeah, so that just swings around, pop the catch off. So that's a manual, so I've got the, we talked about the 12 volt before, but sometimes you just want to wash your hand, right? So it's just a manual galley pump, mm. away you go. So at the end of setup, or end of pack up, sorry. Electric pump? Manual Gravit pump. Uh, manual. Yeah, just manual a manual pump, pump. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So same thing, yep. gas. More gas. Fill, yep. fill power. up water. Yeah, yeah. Power. Oh, so you've got power points on this side. Yeah, I've got some USBs and SIGs on this side, so we can run, you know, a drop fridge and things like that on that there. side. There's yeah, yeah. Six. Well, you know, when mm. you've got, when you got a bunch of kids and their friends, USB ports become yeah, really yeah. popular. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we run out really quick. Especially so. camping in areas where there's uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't get that much over, over west. Turn that. So, more storage. So I keep all the food handy oh, with the kitchen. Food. So with the kitchen right there, side, yeah, yeah. with this awning wrapped all the way around, this is the primary living space here. Yeah. And I want it to go for these clear boxes because, again, when you've got friends, kids, friends and whatever else. What's that? Jack Daniels. That's smoking chips. So Jack Daniels flavoured chips for smoking. So if you're smoking some sausages or, you know, salmon or whatever else, it's good? fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Highly recommended. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. But yeah, all easy. The kids can see everything. So they're not, oh, where's the blah, blah, blah. It's like mm, you can see it. It's point, all right in front of you. You can see through your yeah. plastic containers. They can easily find things. Pull it out, stack them. Yep. Oh yeah, they don't even move, do they? Yeah, no, they're locked in. No trouble at all with, with movement. I got my Julka in there, bathroom, things like that are all just tucked in there. What's this one? That's trans cool. It's just a little evaporative cooler. So it's a little 12 volt evaporative. Just fill it up with water and it just blows across the water and gives you cooler oh, air. Gives it a mist or? Yeah, or not a mist, but just, just uh, water cooled oh, air. Like, so like a bit of an outdoor air conditioning. You got it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So Queensland summer for me, that actually gets used a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right. I've never yeah, seen yeah. or so heard no, of that uh, Aussie, before. another Aussie thing, so trans cool. Mm. And yeah, just 12 volt, just plug into the trailer. You know, the middle of the day, you know, we get that really hot part of the day and you just want to cool off just a little bit. Uh, just well, pop some water in. Yeah, where we are, it's just hot all the time. Oh, there you go, so you'd run it all yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, so I've got a Red Arc BMS in, in, the, in the toolbox, but I wanted to move the monitor a place where I could actually see it when I'm camping. So I found a uh, B&H waterproof enclosure that oh, keeps the, the, got the rubber here. seal in it. That's right. So that keeps the monitor nice and safe, but now it's right at my fingertips. So I can very easily scroll through here. I can see where my battery is at when I'm running solar. I can see how much solar is coming through and it gives you an idea of how much current's being drained through the system. So you know exactly what's going on mm. with your batteries. So. so that's your fridge drawing at the moment? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, was there about five amps going through? Yeah, that's yeah. the fridge drawing that. So so yeah, so it gives you really good visibility. You know, I've got two 120 uh, amp batteries in there. So you really want to know where you are with your batteries when you're on a longer trip. Oh, so you got 240. Yeah, I've got 240. Oh yeah, yeah that'd so be heaps. Though. It's heaps, yeah, yeah, that's heaps. Until the Solar. kids in their phones and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And yeah, I use a Red Arc uh, 180 watt solar blanket. So we just pop that up on top of the trailer and there's a solar input on the side of the trailer there. And again, because it's a Red Arc BMF, it's got a, set, it's got a solar input. Q&A. Great. All right, let's start with... I can double ask you questions here. Awesome. We'll, we'll keep it as short as possible. Okay, no, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Pajero. Yes. Already know the answer, but what's your top three mods? Uh, top three mods, um, definitely the ball bar and the, the and the sliders on the side. You definitely need protection with the winch there. That's really important. Next mod was the dual battery system, making sure I had plenty of power in the car. And then the supercharger's just been fantastic, hands down. Towing a big load, that's really helped me out. Okay. Yep. You surprised me there, because I thought it'd be supercharger lockers. Oh, oh that's it, that's it, yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, no, you said cool. three. <laughs> yeah, I did, I said three, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good, but yeah. Best thing, worst thing, Pajero? Uh, best thing on the Pajero, um, it's actually a really good hybrid car. I know a lot of people sort of rag on us and the, the Pajero crew a little bit, but it's a great city car. So driving around the city is fantastic, but it's been very capable off-road. I've had that car uh, up on uh, Fraser Island many, many times, and it's really capable on the sand. I've taken mm. it out back. It's great for that too. So best thing about it, very versatile. Worst thing about it, probably, you know, the only thing I regret is I didn't get a diesel. Uh, okay. You know, at the time I thought petrol was the way to go, but with the towing now and the, the trips I'm doing, I think, you know, the, the one regret is I probably should have got a diesel. So it's, it's mainly the, the towing. Yeah, just the towing. Yeah, yeah. But if you weren't towing, then... Oh, the petrol's mm. fantastic around the city, yeah. But yeah, now yeah, yeah, with the towing. That's... With a supercharger yep. and a petrol yep. on sand on its own, it'll be, it'll be a whole whole lot of fun. Oh, it's an absolute yeah. blast. Yeah, that's a, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know that, that, was the, that was the upgrade then. It's like, oh, what will I do? And it's like, oh, we'll just add a supercharger as you do. <laughs> as you do, yeah. <laughs> as you do. And that's been fantastic. So with the NM Pajero, yes. what is the uh, thing to look out for? NM Pajero, uh, I reckon the number one thing with NM is to keep it serviced, right? All the parts on it are pretty good, but if you don't keep looking after and keep servicing and replace them within, within time, um, they will go and then you're looking at trying to, trying to hunt parts down. So just keep it well serviced. I think that's the key thing with an NM. Just emphasising on making sure the logbook's up to Exactly date. right, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely yeah. look for a good quality logbook on it for sure. Other than that, there's no specific thing that uh, people in forums perhaps discuss that, um, that are an issue with them? No, not, not with the, the petrol. Um, there's, uh, I think there's one with the diesel. The diesel uh, fuel pump is something that, that I've noticed people on the forums have talked about that if you've got to replace that one, that one's going to cost you a few bob. So, okay. so I think that's um, that's been the one catch on the diesel. But the, the petrol's been pretty good, actually, mate. Yeah, really happy with it. With the trailer? Yes. So you can go camping both with and without. Yep. So the, the trailer comes when the, when the kids are joining you? Really, the intent behind the trailer was friends and family camping. So it's a centrepiece for camping. So, yeah, so when mm. the kids come and their friends come, and I love getting the, you know, getting the kids out into the, into the bush and camping, um, that was the intent of the trailer. Let's, let's get a go. bunch of people. Big base camp. Big base camp, and away you go. Empty so. the back seats out and off, off you and go away for you a go. day trip. That's right. Um, I will say, though, now that I've got it, it's pretty convenient to go camping, <laughs> even if it's just myself and a mate, given you've got the water and the kitchen and all those things. So I have to admit there's been a few times when I've done a weekender and still taken the trailer just for the convenience of the trailer. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, yeah. So, but no, it's really designed for base camp camping with a big group of people. Well, at least you're using it because there's a lot of people who have a camper trailer yep. and they don't really use them enough, I don't think. Everybody's got a job. All jobs have their moments, right? And I think camping's just one of those ways to balance life out. So, you know, I try and deliberately make time. It's like, you know, we're all busy, right? But, you know, mm. find yep, the long yeah. weekend. Got to make time. Yeah, find the long, just find a time and get out there and do it. You know, Australia's blessed with, you know, beautiful place to go camping. So, and we've got access to this kind of gear, so why not, right? Exactly. Mm. So, uh, your favourite favorite type of camping gear, like, so there's a couple yep. of camping gear that you, you think is worth mentioning. Yep. Um, you know, it could be like a, a floor mat or yeah, yeah, yeah. even your grass mat or whatever. <laughs> That's so, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so favorite bit, absolutely my favorite bit of camping gear is the, the Oz tent. I love my, my Oz tent. 
Um, you know, people ask, oh, you know, why don't you get a rooftop tent or why don't you do this or that or whatever else? I grew up camping in tents and I found the Oz tent is absolutely the easiest tent to get up and down. And it's so configurable. You know, do I want to use the awning? Do I want to just use it as the A, you know, like as the lean-to? Like use a tag-along tent. And... Precisely, yeah. Mm. So um, that's definitely my favourite bit of camping gear. Can you um, zip it onto those awnings? Yes, you can. You yeah, can. yeah. So I've attached it on there and that's nice. So that gives even more shade yeah. under the awning. So that's been a good thing. Absolutely. Excellent. That'd be my favourite bit, mate. All right, so right now we are in Gloucester. We are yep. in New South Wales. Yes. And um, if I came to New South Wales or anyone else yep. from any other state came here, yep. where would you recommend to go four-wheel driving? Oh, four-wheel driving. Um, well, I'm a Queenslander and I've come down here to Gloucester, so it's an easy tip for me. Yeah, um, that's this a silly question. Yeah, no, that? no, but it's great because... <laughs> But no, no, this area here where we're in, right, the Barrington Tops area, you're just north of Sydney, so you can come into Sydney, but you can come up to this area. This whole area, there's a heap of four-wheel driving up in the Barrington Tops, Gloucester Tops area. So it's all mountain range. Yeah, yeah that's right. And plenty of spots uh, to put up your tent too. Like the state forests around here are really camping friendly. So I'd say just this area, just sort of north northwest of Sydney is a great spot mm. uh, for bush camping. If you're into bush camping, this would be the area to go. Yeah, well, from what I've seen so far, I mean, all your rivers are flowing pretty much all year round. That's right. Yeah, yeah, plenty of grassy areas to pull into and set up a tent, yeah. but then plenty of wood around and things like that, so you can you can make a fire and I'm used to you know, seeing, cook your dinner. I'm used to seeing rivers dry for six months at a time. You know? <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> Bit different here, isn't it? It's fantastic. No, it's a nice area. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure, mate. Yeah, good to meet you. Yep. Supercharged beast and yeah. the dot trailer. <laughs> yep. My pleasure. And thank you very much to Kaido behind the video camera again, helping me out. And also a special thanks to Drifter for lending me an 80 series, which I'm driving around in to allow me to do these shoots. So thank you there. And if you'd like to support the creation of this kind of content, you can head to patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl and you can subscribe right here and check out Kaido's channel. Cheers, see you in the next video. Cheers guys.